Hey, my name's Helen and you're listening to the Love Mondays Club podcast. If you're a fellow tutor, trainer or coach, then welcome. You're in the right place. Whether you're looking to start, grow or expand your online services, this podcast is for you. My goal is to help you build your business, earn more money and have more fun in this messy muddle we call entrepreneurship. Every Monday, I'm going to be sharing practical tips to help you accelerate your business. From marketing to mindset to money, we'll cover it all. So if you're ready, let's dive in. So I think that December is a bit of a strange time of year. In one breath, many of us are running around like lunatics, trying to get everything, you know, done and sorted by Christmas. There's always that Christmas deadline of in before Christmas. And yet at the same time, there's also that feeling of that the year is ending soon. And it really, I think, encourages you to reflect maybe on sort of what's been going on for the past year. But also as well, like I sort of talked about in the last episode, thinking about those New Year's resolutions as well. So last week I was talking about saving time, I guess, in some ways and sort of jumping into your New Year's resolutions as soon as possible and not necessarily having to set these deadlines and wait to make those changes. Now today, I would really love to encourage you just to sit down for about 15 minutes or so and make a couple of notes about what we're about to talk about here. In terms of doing reviews, when I think about being in my previous jobs, the thought of reviews makes me feel actually quite stressed. (laughs) I could feel the blood pressure rising just thinking about it. Because for me, when I did reviews in my previous jobs employment, they felt like very fruitless kind of tick box exercises. And there was always that frustration of you would share your views, share your ideas, make the suggestions and changes. And then almost inevitably, it would feel like nothing would really come of it. Or if it did, it was so slow and tedious. So for me, something that's really important in running your own business is that you can make changes. So what I'd like you to do is, like I say, sit down literally for sort of 10, 15 minutes today, maybe a little bit later in the week if you get a moment to yourself and almost imagine that rather than being the boss, you know, the one in charge in your business, I want you to actually imagine that you are an employee for yourself almost. And I want you to review how everything has gone this year. Be kind to yourself, you know, make sure that you celebrate things as well as maybe thinking about some of the negatives or things that you would maybe change slightly differently. Because of course, we are hardwired to often focus on the negatives. So what I'd like you to do is to think about five things that went really well this year that you were really pleased with as as an employee in your own business but also five things that maybe you would change. So good things could be maybe milestones that you achieved, big steps that you took, maybe thinking, you know, things were implemented really quickly. Maybe you got some really great customers that you got to work with and had lots of opportunities. And maybe those five bad things could be things like, you know, you felt like you were severely underpaid this year for the amount of work that you put in or maybe you feel like you didn't get enough holiday this year loads of different things maybe you're feeling frustrated because you had some ideas and actually you feel like you haven't implemented them quickly enough and then at the end of this exercise try and think of one word that might sum up or summarize the year for you Now, I'll be honest with you, I have done this exercise a couple of times myself in context of just doing it by myself or doing it with other coaches that I've worked with. And it is really challenging, I think, sometimes to sit there and just, you know, sum things up in in one word. For me, though, I think having thought about this quite a lot over the past few weeks, the one word that really stands out for me for my year is pivot. And yes, I'll be honest, I was speaking to my uh, a close friend of mine the other day and I did say that I feel like that meme from Friends with Ross shouting pivot, pivot genuinely plays in my head most days. And, you know, the rest of the Friends cast who are exasperated with him are pretty much a reflection of maybe my partner and some of my other <laughs> business colleagues that I work with. <laughs> But I think for me, that was one of the most important things about becoming self-employed was having the ability and the power and the opportunity to sort of pivot in my business and make changes and try different things. 
And change is always good. That's something that a lot of us crave, I think, when when we decide that we want to leave employment and run our own businesses. And like we mentioned earlier, the problem is that in the corporate world or office world or in the classroom even, change happens really slowly, actually sometimes at a pace that's, you know, it's not taking action fast enough. And by the time it's finally implemented, it's almost not making that much of a difference anymore. And, you know, one of the reasons for this is because they have to do sort of risk assessments of things and they have to make sure that, you know, these changes are going to work and and they sort of introduce them slowly. But at least with running our own businesses, we can take more risks with these things. Now, obviously, I'm not telling you that it's a good idea to wake up and, you know, drop all your clients in the morning and decide to totally change your business overnight. That's probably a little bit too extreme. Making big changes is still totally possible for you in a manageable way. And this is something I'm definitely going to talk about in a future episode to sort of help you with this. I think another thing as well in terms of, you know, trying out different things, making these changes is I listen to hours of podcasts every week. I, you know, read lots of like self-development books and things like that. And I'm always really interested in learning about sort of other entrepreneurs and, you know, how they've got to be where they are today. And honestly, not one of these people that I've read about or listened to have ever come up with an idea at the very start of their business. And then that's been it. That's been the golden ticket. Like if anything, it's taken them years to kind of try out different things, fail in many different ways. But ultimately, every time they make those pivots, they make those changes, things get better and better. You know, next year I'm celebrating five years of being self-employed and okay, I'm not quite on the Forbes rich list yet, (laughs) but I would say that every change I've made in my business has brought me so many different experiences and helped my business to grow more and more. So this sort of feeling, this, because I think change as well can be very uncomfortable for people, getting comfortable with the uncomfortable as the saying goes, has been really helpful for me in my business. So three ways that I would say that maybe I've pivoted in the past year. And actually, this has probably been one of the biggest years of change in my business. Like I've really gone in and, and taken a lot more risks, which I would say overall have paid off. I mean, you know, if I was thinking of other words to sum up the year, sometimes perhaps the word stress could come into this, but that is partly my own doing. (laughs) I was also very in control of that and could have changed these things. So the three changes that I've made, and this is actually going to feed into a bit of a future episode as well that I'm doing in a couple of weeks for you. But one of the main things was partnering up with another tutor and sort of coming together to create a new service for the students that we both served. Overall, this has been a fantastic experience and something I wish I'd done sort of many, many years ago. My business partner is hopefully going to be coming on a future episode to talk to you guys about this because I think lots of us, you know, when we start businesses, we we work a lot by ourselves. So it's really interesting to think about actually, you know, how do you go about finding somebody else to work with? You know, what should you consider in these situations? But this, of course, as well was, was really scary. This was a big change for me because it also felt a little bit at times like I was undoing a lot of the work and sort of hard work that I put into building my own business. And I think that's a really big thing is is thinking about your identity. And, you know, when you maybe start working with somebody else, your, your identity within the business changes a little bit. So that's been something that's taken me quite a few, well, really the whole year to kind of get used to. Overall, the risk has totally paid off. And again, it's a bit of a mindset approach to it. It's not like I've undone any of the hard work I've done of building up my own business. If anything, I've taken all of the good stuff from what I've done in previous jobs and then applied it to this new partnership that we've been running together. And off the back of it, you know, we've created this amazing membership. We've hit some big goals for the end of the year. It has been a really big success, but also a massive change in the way that I sort of delivered and worked with students. But of course, you know, that's more my sort of tutoring side that I still do. But of course, really, the biggest change in pivot for the year has been starting this new coaching business. Now, I guess something that I really want to share about this is I've been doing this now for sort of just over a year, potentially, although I would say that the first few months were very much kind of exploring, building an audience, doing a bit of research. And and I took things quite slowly and, and I did that quite intentionally. But I really sort of hit the ground running and started working with people properly from sort of March, April time. One thing I really want to share with people is that if you have ideas and you want to try something different, then honestly, just go for it. Because 
I have absolutely loved doing all this coaching. Like it, it is definitely the way forward for me. It's what I want to really focus a lot of my time and energy on. Even a few years ago, I knew that this was something I wanted to try, but I, and I had these ambitions to do it for some bizarre reason. And I, I honestly can't explain why to you. I had these sort of deadlines in my mind of like, well, I can't start doing coaching until like I had a certain age in my mind that I couldn't start doing coaching until I reached that age, which, which honestly made no sense. And when I say it out loud to people, I won't say it out loud on here because you, you can, not that I'm hide my age or anything, but <laughs> But this is the thing. When I say it out loud to people like coaches that I've worked with, I could hear myself saying it thinking this sounds absolutely ridiculous. And actually for me, what happened was it wasn't one day I woke up and decided to change my mind, but actually fate knocked on the front door and presented me with an opportunity. And that opportunity was somebody sort of out of the blue messaged me to say that they really loved what I was doing with my teaching business. Could I show them how to do it? And it was one of those moments where I was like, it would be so silly for me not to do something with this and and just have a go at it. And so we started working together and really the rest is history. And so over the past year, I've been really sort of trying to grow and focus on this coaching business. And I've been playing around with lots of different formats. And again, my knowledge from my tutoring has really helped me here. And, and I knew from day one that I didn't want to kind of get myself locked into lots of one-to-one clients because I also enjoy the group dynamic in these situations so for me it's been about lots of changes lots of experimenting with like the one-to-many approach and I would say I've probably made three big changes and pivots <laughs> in the space of a year of what I wanted to do that might sound like a lot and might sound like I'm sort of jumping all over the place but nine times out of ten the changes that we can make in our business and the changes that I've made are nearly always off the back of feedback from the people that I'm working with Because this is the thing, if you put your clients at the centre and your your students potentially, if you're tutoring, at the centre of what you're doing and sort of everything you're trying to design is to help them and make their experience better and better, then actually what you'll find is that being open to that feedback means that you will bring in, you know, potentially your, your, your audience will give you feedback and ideas that you haven't even considered before. So that's one thing that's been really powerful for me. But also as well, the people you work with know that you're always trying to improve improve the service, make it better for them, give them new opportunities. So I found that actually the vast majority of people have been very happy with me making these tweaks and changes and that it's improved and got better and better with time. I will, however, say now is the time that I'm going to settle into the format that I've decided on. And next year, I'm going to sort of really go for it with this new format because I think it's it's a bit of a winning formula and it works really well for the people that I'm working with at the moment. So in a couple of weeks, I'm going to share a lot more about that and the changes that are coming. And finally, I guess one of the last sort of big changes or pivots that I've made in the year was actually stripping back my timetable and giving myself a lot more I guess white space so to speak. I think after Covid I really needed this because you know during that time it was like it was a horrible time for everybody and you know so much changed within that period so much changed really quickly and sort of out of our control and and that can be very difficult to cope with and within that period as well I was very unwell for a certain period of time um, not COVID related you know we we had sort of sicknesses as well in our families we we lost people that we really cared about and what I found was that during that period I ended up working harder and harder, you know, pushing myself almost six, seven days a week sometimes, especially while we were during lockdown. But none of that hard work was really about growth or or building my business. It was, I think, on reflection, a bit of a distraction technique. And it was just much easier to bury my head in work and crack on and just sort of focus on, on, you know, serving the students I was working with. And again, don't get me wrong, this, you know, this really helped me. I learned a lot. I probably had one of my biggest income years as well because of the amount of time I was working. But in reality, like it wasn't sustainable. I didn't want to sustain that approach to working. And I was being a bit of an ostrich and and burying my head in the sand about lots of things. For me, this past year was, and I decided this at the beginning of the year, or maybe just before, was taking a step back, really cutting down on sort of how much like teaching and contact time I had with people. And actually, in many ways, I'm working a lot less, but still earning the same sort of salary that I was I was sort of building towards before that. And, you know, that is always a saying in a phrase, isn't it? You, see, you hear about people saying, you know, working less and 
and actually earning more and actually sometimes when you take a step back from your business it can really help you to grow and it feels counterproductive because there is definitely this attitude we have of like you know the harder I work um, the more that I do the, the, the more that things are going to grow and honestly that's not necessarily the case and again this is all content that I'm looking forward to sharing with you and exploring this a lot more in the new year I'm leaving you lots of you know dangling carrots here in this episode I appreciate <laughs> But this is the thing. This is why I guess I'm talking to you today about pivoting and making changes and being brave enough to do that. Because for me, I had sort of four years in my business of doing well, growing, but it wasn't, you know, fast growth. It was sort of plodding along quite happily. And I definitely spent a lot of time sort of locked away just doing my own thing and I loved that but actually this past year where I've made these changes allowed myself to take on like new opportunities working with different people and bringing in new services to like my my businesses and my my life it's really had a huge impact and it's made me feel very optimistic about the future of my businesses and next year and how actually I can trust myself to take these risks and it's something that I really want you to do as well because I bet if you're sat here listening to this podcast you've got dreams of starting your own businesses and and it might be you know tutoring it might be any other service you know I work with lots of people now sort of across different industries and if you've got these ideas and you want to go for them then 100% I always recommend people to take the risk and sort of dive in head first with it all And again, one last carrot to dangle for you. I'm going to talk a lot more about this in the new year for you all. So just to kind of finish this episode, just to sort of go back on what we were saying at the beginning, I really recommend sitting down and giving yourself those 10, 15 minutes, pretending you are the employee of your business and just doing your year in review and thinking about, you know, what's gone really well for you? What have you enjoyed? What do you want? You know, do you want more of that sort of next year? And then potentially, what are five things that you maybe didn't enjoy as much, maybe opportunities you wish you'd taken, or just things that you know you you definitely want to make changes for for next year. And then overall, have a go and see if you can summarise your year in one word. And if you're happy to, I would love to hear what your one word is. So you can get in contact with me. You can email me or you can message me on Instagram or come along and join the Facebook group and get in touch with me through there. So I'll put the links to all of these down in the show notes as well. Otherwise, thank you so much for listening and enjoy doing your years in review. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Love Mondays Club podcast. Don't forget to review and subscribe or share this episode with one of your business friends. For more information and support from today's episode, head over to the show notes at lovemondaysclub.co.uk. Have a great week and I'll see you next Monday.